Well, hello there, IECs. Uh, welcome to this um, <clears throat> IEC Coffee Talk. I'm going to give a few minutes here for folks to join me, and then we will get started. But I uh, want to welcome you here on this, uh, this in my case, soggy Friday um, afternoon. Um, or wherever you are, I'm hoping that you're having a little bit better weather. But you know what? It's really not that bad outside. I'm actually kind of excited that spring is um, all here. And um, heck, before you know it, summer will be here as well. But um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, like I said, I'll wait a couple of minutes as we're letting people join me. But I'll tell you what you could do for me, if you don't mind. Um, let me know where you are, um, what, uh, what state or city um, would be great. I'd, I'd love to know who's joining me today on this IC Coffee Talk. Um, personally, while you're doing that, I will tell you that I've been in IEC for 17 years and um, over that time have focused on college affordability the whole time. I mean, it's been something that's been part of my practice now. Just a little teaser on that. The reason being is that um, I was a financial planner for 25 years before I did something that I think a lot of folks do. Maybe, you know, I get the feeling they do because I, I, just so that you know, I talk to a lot of IECs with the work that um, uh, that they're doing in their practices, especially about adding MICAP to their practice. But um, in my case, I got an opportunity to go with 76 high school guidance counselors from Kentucky and um, Illinois, uh, where I drove to Nashville, Tennessee, hopped on a plane with a bunch of people I didn't even know. I had just joined the Kentucky ACAC. -AC, and um, we flew over to North Carolina and visited Duke, UNC Chapel Hill, Wake Forest, NC State, Elon, David, or Davidson, and um, High Point. And folks, I was hooked. I, I, it was like, this is the coolest thing ever. I've got to figure out how to do more of this. And shortly, um, and actually, ironically, just before that, I turned around and... Um, um, well, um, had uh, had an independent counselor who was working for me who came to me after we had already started working with 20 families, and, and she informed me that her husband no longer wanted her out on the weekends in the, the evenings meeting with clients. And so that all came to a screeching halt, and I was at a crossroads of life, uh, which was, what am I going to do? You know, um, I love what I'm doing. Um, I'd like to help more families. And so that led to... Um, college and beyond the business that I started. But anyway, so folks, I see that we've got uh, people here from North Carolina. Welcome, Georgia, Seattle, Washington, another North Carolina, Minnesota, Colorado, uh, Florida. Welcome uh, to all of you. So glad you could join me. And by the way, sorry for the late notice. Uh, we sent that out last night as kind of a reminder, but um, it was one of those things where there's just a lot going on. I actually just got back from the Jacksonville SACAC conference, and it was awesome, folks. I will tell you. Hello, Lisa. Um, uh, Lisa was down there with me, uh, but um, maybe some of the rest of you were too. Um, what a great conference. I mean, it was just fantastic to see everybody um, and also to make some new connections, um, see some old friends. Um, just love doing those conferences. And one of the things I mentioned in the notes that I sent out to you all was that I had somebody walk up to me. Actually, I had an IEC walk up to both. Uh, they walked up to Matt and I while we were at our table as well as Justin as well. Um, and um, she, she told us something interesting. In fact, I'm gonna share it with you. So I've already put it, uh, let me make sure it goes to everybody here um, in the chat box. Uh, but what she did was she said that there's some big changes to how families are gonna log into the um, uh, FAVSA in the future. So I want you to think about that. You know, there, we're going through this whole FASVA Simplification Act, right? It's supposed to make things easier, which it is. That's dropping it from over 100 questions down to 36. But what I didn't expect is that there's going to be an additional wrinkle when it comes to, for example, parents that are, um, you know, filing um, separately with their tax returns. That's going to be creating a problem. That they're going to have to have separate FSA IDs. OK, uh, in other words, they're still going to get the tax information for that family. It's just that it's going to add that. I mean, in the past, that's not been the case. Here's another one, which is, again, and even says it here that um, 
they're going to require the students and the parents to log in separately to complete the respective sections of the new documentation. Very interesting, very, very interesting. You know, in the past, we've been able to use the student's login or the parent's login by itself to be able to get in there and complete it. Now they're complicating it, which means that families are gonna to have to be together to finish it. And what if you've got a family where the parents are just not gonna be real, you know, open to it, or maybe the schools, you know, some of the school systems out there. I know in Texas, for example, you guys um, require, they require completion of the, um, the free application for federal student aid as part of the graduation requirement. So what's gonna happen there? if the parents can't help or can't be there to do that type of thing. So I don't know, folks, I, I'm, you know, I'm kind of perplexed on this whole thing. It's gonna be really, really, really interesting. Um, you know, and, and somebody else is saying here too, and I agree, um, you know, they've got to create those FSA IDs. And I, I don't know if you all ran into this, uh, this last year, but I did, I had some families that created an ID. One in particular stands out very clearly to me. It was one of my terrific clients up in Massachusetts. And don't you know that something had gotten screwed up with his name on the social security card? And um, it was all based on the Irish spelling of his last name. He, that's what he always referred to it as. Um, that, you know, when they processed it, somebody up there left a letter out and it was creating a ma major mess with him being able to get his FSA ID verified. So get ready, get ready for stuff like that. The other thing that was mentioned, and it's absolutely true, the financial aid uh, form, the, specifically the uh, FAVSA, is not going to be available now until December. And I want you to think about that when it comes to your ED and your EA families. Um, how's that all going to work out? I mean, that CSS profile is going to become obviously a really, really big deal down the road and something we're going to have to keep up with. So, um, I don't know. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be an interesting time. By the way, it's, an, it's a great time for you doing what you're doing and the great work that you do, especially if you're helping families from an affordability standpoint to help coach them through this because they're going to be freaking out, you know, when they're finding out that, uh, oh my gosh, I got to get these applications in, but then I can't get my uh, FAFSA done until December. What about the CSS profile? All these things. So that's where you're going to come in um, or come to the rescue. Um, one thing I wanted to, to walk you through too is um, kind of the onboarding process with MyCap. Um, you, for those of you that have the MyCap platform already, thank you, welcome to the CAP family. If you're still trying to think about whether or not you wanna add this as a part of your practice, um, first of all, just know that I'm here for you as far as the ability to schedule a meeting with me. Um, if you'd like to do that, uh, I'm gonna put my College A Pro um, email into the chat box here, but you can always reach out to me and I'll be happy to send you a link to schedule that meeting with me. Um, but uh, I will tell you, it's amazing just since I started these conversations with IE season, and I really only started doing this sometime in December. I was doing a little bit beforehand, but full-time um, or, or, you know, it's, it's a part-time job, by the way. I don't know if you realize that I'm a full-fledged IEC just like you are. Um, in my practice. Um, I work with about uh, 45 to 50 families per year um, on top of the work that I do with College Aid Pro. Some of you probably think I'm nuts, um, but I will tell you, my wife is a retired teacher. And as she says, I come upstairs to my office here and I go into my uh, bunker, close the door and, and do my thing. But it's, it's great because I can uh, manage my practice as well as doing the, the College Aid Pro work that I do. But um, anyway, the, the point is that I believe because of the ever increasing price of college that um, MyCap is the great or is one of the best tools that you can use. Um, I really do. I've been using it personally in my practice since May the 1st of 2019. Um, and especially with the new product, the MyCap product that's out there for just an easy, transparent conversation that you can have with your consumers, your families, your clients. Um, it really is a, a nice way to be able to walk them through with their federal SAI. By the way, I, I, I said this. In fact, I had everybody join me in saying this. Get, get used to saying SAI, which is the student aid index from the federal system, as well as the EFC, the expected family contribution from the institutional side, unless they decide to change things up. But um, those are both going to be uh, moving forward, the acronyms that we're going to hear out there. 
but you know you can use the software very effectively to show them their numbers, their federal, their institutional numbers. Also, talk to them about their uh, their budgets, you know, so that you're working through that. But um, anyway, if you're having trouble with onboarding, I would just encourage you to say, uh, just ask a simple question to everybody you come into. How are you planning on paying for college? Um, if their answer is the dreaded, um, if our son or daughter gets into XYZ University, we'll figure it out, then say, well, I'd like to introduce you to a tool that we need to use because I now use in my practice uh, my cap, meaning you know that this is the way you're presenting it. Or if nothing else, I want you to use the mycap.collegeaidpro.com link. I'll uh, put that in here as well um, because you know we're going to have some money conversations so that at the end of the day, um, I am not sitting out there worried that uh, come the spring that you come back to me and are going, oh, uh, we didn't know what we were getting into. We had no idea that it was going to cost this much to send our son or daughter to these particular schools. Um, so again, if, if affordability is part of your process, then please use the MyCap software to make that happen. It, uh, it's a very effective uh, tool to use. You probably know that as an IEC, you have the ability to set that up um, at no cost to you. Um, your families can actually um, access that using the link that I sent you, or even better, what you can do is give them um, or set up a landing page. Um, we'll set it up for you at no cost. And that landing page then allows you to invite your families to go to this, the same thing. But the cool part about it is you've got the ability to collaborate, meaning you'll see all of your clients' accounts all on one dashboard that you'll have access to. And then you can click on those and work through them doing the fantastic work that you do, which is helping them build their college lists and then you know all the admissions processing that you do. But uh, again, I just think there's some real value to that and something that uh, would make a lot of sense. So just you know, give it some thought. If you're stuck on it, if you'd like additional help, I'm here to help you. Um, let's talk about some marketing ideas. You know, marketing ideas in general is an IEC. Um, you're saying that the site is not working. I'm not sure how that's possible. Um, let's see, maybe try... Try just mycap.collegeapro.com. Why don't you guys try that for me? Try typing in mycap.collegeapro.com. Uh, while you're doing it, though, I'll do the same thing and see what's going on. Uh, okay. Sorry, I want to make sure that, uh, okay, yeah, no, it's working, folks. I, in fact, let me share my screen with you so that you can see what I'm talking about. It's it's popping up here, um, so I'm not sure what you're typing in. Um, in fact, just make it simple on yourself. Just type in, um, you know, mycap.collegeapro.com instead of the www. It might be an HTTPS, uh, but it'll come up to this screen, and then all your families have to do is they click on it to get started, but... I also wanna show you something else since we're on the screen anyway, um, why don't I show you what this landing page looks like so that you know what I'm talking about, all right? Uh, so give me a second here and uh, we'll hop in here so that you get a sense of what it is that we create. For those of you that have already got this, thanks for your patience as I share this with some folks that maybe haven't, um, haven't already done this with us. But this is just a, a blank sample of what we do is we create this landing page with your logo in the middle. And then what we'll do is we'll put your company name right here. And it says, it's excited to team up with College Aid Pro to provide our families with free access to their cutting edge technology, MyCap, that demystifies financial aid and shows you how to get the most free money for school and make an informed college buying decision. Um, now, in some cases, it also goes on. If you've, if you've provided your families with a code for 100% off of that, uh, we also provide a free one-year subscription upgrade to MyCap so that you have unlimited colleges. So this may or may not be in here. I, I intentionally did this because I'm going to show you both sides of the coin. Uh, but it'll either be a 15% coupon code that we create for you that you can give to your families or a 100% coupon code if you and your practice decide to add MyCap uh, to your comprehensive fee. 
Either way, it doesn't matter. Um, and in fact, I will tell you, I have IECs that I work with uh, through CAP that do both. They'll do the 15% for their one hour clients, for example, and they'll do the, um, the comprehensive fee um, option number two for those families that they're, um, you know, they're, they're putting in as part of their practice. Totally up to you. So, you know, don't let that scare you off. It's uh, definitely an ability to do that. Um, what, you know, so however we can help you make that happen. But from a marketing standpoint, um, what we're looking at is this. How do you want to be known in your community? I mean, do you want to be known as um, not only an independent educational consultant extraordinaire, um, but in addition to that, you want to be able to be the one that families go to from an affordability standpoint. And some of you may be going, you know what, Dan, my clients overall, they can cover the full cost. Um, I get that in my own practice. I have plenty of families that can write a check to send their son or daughter wherever they want to. But in addition to that, I also run into a case where there are families that um, would like to see some merit scholarship money come on the table for, for all the hard work that their students have put into their education or the, you know, the extracurriculars that they've been doing through the years or whatever it might be. And if that's the case, then um, you know, having that affordability conversation and in particular being able to show them where to find the money um, it makes the MyCap system really, really easy to use. So it really comes down to how you want to market yourself. Do you want to be known in your community as the go-to person, even um, across the nation as the go-to person for, for all things college affordability as well as admissions? Um, I can tell you that I personally have always, like I told, or like I said from the beginning, always talked about the money. And um, I do have some families that decide not to go through that part of the process with me, which is fine by me, um, you know, but the vast majority, probably 95% of my families are all going to do my cap, whether they're high income or low income, it doesn't matter. It's all about trying to understand the numbers. And then even more importantly, heck, I think it's worth it just by the fact of using it from the scholarship search tool that's factored into the software, because it really does give you the sense and the ability to help your families out. And Maybe to that extent, I can show you what I'm talking about here. So um, let's see here. Let me go into my system here. And um, actually, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you as an IEC the way that I log into my system so that you have a sense of how it works. Uh, but um, we, you know, we all get this opportunity. It's called the back end uh, to be able to log into the system. And then once the system opens up, it comes to this screen here. Um, IECs would look a little differently because I've got an administrative site, but when you click users, it actually goes and populates all the names in here. But I'm going to go ahead and type in my sample case here so that you've got a sense of, you know, what this looks like. And so it's a little slider bar. You can move it around. But what we're doing is we're going to the right. We click on this login to this particular client. And then you can see what it does is it actually brings up, um, you know, the, the sample here. It brings up their, their um, information. now. I want to be very clear. You are protected as an IEC from seeing their um, financial information. And in fact, families really don't have to put in all their financial details if they don't want to, while still getting the ability to see all the scholarship information that comes up for the colleges based on the student's academics. So what am I talking about? Well, if we come down here, if we open up like Auburn here, um, we can see what the school is doing. So Auburn is saying that this is a student who would qualify, you know, we're projecting that they would qualify for $16,500 merit-based scholarship. Now, where'd that come from? Well, within the system, first, there's a lot of details when it comes to the admissions that, that you can look at, you know, for those families that are, that you're coaching through trying to figure out, okay, where's my GPA? Or if I've taken the test, the test scores, scores fall, you know, what kind of additional, what's the admit rate? Um, four-year graduation rate, things like that coming out of the scope. But from a financial aid side, um, you know, what kind of a financial aid form do they use here? In this case, they're using the federal methodology. Uh, what percentage of total need is met by this school? And what percentage of students who don't have uh, financial need uh, do get merit aid? Now, the good news here is we give Auburn a merit aid transparency grade, which you know, I, I personally think it's pretty awesome that we do this because it helps families to see, you know, how transparent is this school when it comes to the money? 
And in this case, we can see it's about $8,300 that is their average um, need-based merit. But when we come below, it's because when you look at this, this particular student has all the credentials that are necessary for this academic presidential scholarship. If we click on this arrow down, it says that this is a likely match, and it talks about it a little bit more. And by the way, that would be the same with any of the scholarships that are below here. So you can see the way that this um, you know, comes into play. Um, some schools, as we know, are created better than others when it comes to total transparency on this stuff, which is exactly why we're trying to put you, the IEC, and your families in the driver's seat as far as being able to see these things. Um, I just love it. I mean, I think it's it's pretty fantastic. So that's why I'm saying whether they provide financial details or not, this is a chance for you to be able to see um, you know, what things look like. And by the way, feel free to, um, to put questions in today. Um, again, I'm just trying to give you a, a quick overview of this, but from a marketing standpoint, you can, you know, you can put that landing page on your uh, website. You can also decide to just send it out to your clients. Uh, it's just whatever's going to be the, the right fit for you as you're trying to, you know, identify what you're going to do. Okay. Um, all right. Enough about that. Let's. Um, so um, actually, one thing while I'm on the screen anyway is how to overcome any challenges you're having with my my cap. Um, and I don't know, are you guys having any challenges with MyCap? Tell me. You know, um, I want you to know that we are a community that works together, meaning that uh, this is a team sport. I really do believe that. It's one of the, the best things I love about being an IEC is the collegiality of everybody I come into contact with. I don't care whether you're a super duper big IEC, um, you know, group or if you're um, an individual practitioner um, the way that I am. Um, you know, we all care about what's going on. We care about our profession and everything. So um, just something to think about, but, you know, are there any challenges? So let me see, I've got a Q&A or question that came up here. Um, let's see, I pay monthly for College 8 Pro. When I log in for my sample student, it does not look like what you presented. Um, why don't you reach out to me, I guess, because I've got to figure out what, what we've got you set up on as far as the platform in particular and whether or not you're using the landing page for your clients to tap into it. Because here's the problem, folks. If you strictly have your clients go to mycap.collegeapro.com and set up their accounts, you won't see them. Um, they It's got to go through your landing page for it to work out. Um, so that's really, really, really important that you know that. Um, now, if you've, if they've set it up, we may be able to bring them over and put them underneath. It, it's called your collaboration backend account. We may be able to do that for you, but I then need to know, you know, what, what email they use to set up their account and their name and things like that. But, uh, we might be able to help you. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. There were a couple of other questions that came up. Uh, what does a low transparency college look like? Oh. Jim, good question. Really good question. Um, let me see if I can give you an example of that. Um, let's put in the system. Uh, well, let's see here. Let's try what about Georgetown. Oops, if I would spell it correctly, sorry about that. Okay, so Georgetown University, if I put them in here, I can go ahead and from the system, go ahead and select them right here. And that will have already populated them to my dashboard just by doing that. So if I come up here now, and if we work our way over here, let's look at our friends at Georgetown. So if I go into them, and if we come down, well, okay, terrible, terrible uh, choice on my part, all right? Why is that? Well, because they get a grade of an NA. Why would they get a grade of an NA? Because they don't do any merit-based scholarships, okay? So that's that's my bad. I picked a school that's that's uh, not a good option there. Uh, heck, I don't know, folks in the field, throw a school out to me. Who do you know that does a terrible job of giving scholarships away or disclosing scholarships? Um, help us out here, help me out. Uh, okay, UNC Chapel Hill, good idea. Let's try UNC Chapel Hill. So let's go back over here. Um, okay, let me see a North Carolina Chapel Hill. Let's see what they do here. So let's add them to our system. 
and go back to the dashboard. And let's work our way over to them again. Let's take a look at what we've got here. Probably a good a good uh, selection of a skull, by the way. So let's see what we have. And so from financial aid. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Great suggestion. See, they get a grade of an F. Now, why is that? Well, when we come down below and we look at their numbers, um, they just don't give us a lot of detail, folks. I mean, they just don't. You know, and so, and, and just know this, we have a team of experts on our, I mean, within CAP that all they do all day long is they're out there scouring for information. They're looking for the latest, greatest when it comes to scholarships, um, when it comes to changes in scholarships. Um, for example, Baylor University this year did some changes to the way they were handing out their merit aid. And so, you know, we were on top of that, trying to keep up with that, which means that this, this program is always evolving uh, because we have to. We have to try to keep up with the numbers. We have to keep up with, uh, you know, the, the details, what's it take to qualify for these scholarships, um, all those kinds of things. But again, UNC Chapel Hill is a perfect example of a merit aid transparency grade of an F. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, when the new um, FAFSA simplification, or with the new FAFSA simplification act, do you expect that more families will qualify for aid or the opposite? Oh, really good question. Um, you know what? I would like to think that more low-income families in particular are going to qualify for financial aid. You probably heard some statistics, and in fact, Matt Carpenter at, um, at Jacksonville when we were on the stage, because we did a presentation down there, said that, um, I think it was the Gates Foundation, said that two thirds of the families that start into completing the FAFSA, I'm talking lower income families, um, you know, freeze up and they choose not to continue. If we can get that number to increase as far as the number of families that actually do it, I think it's gonna be a game changer for those families. I think, you know, th they're always talking about the fact that there are a lot of families who would qualify for Pell Grants and Federal Supplemental Education Opportunity Grants that don't go forward with it, which is just really, really unfortunate. And so that's what I would say to you is I think that that's a, a prime example of where I think those families are going to qualify for more money. Now, the Pell Grant, for example, is supposed to go up by another $500. It's at about $7,200 right now. So, you know, maybe we're up to almost $7,300 um, of aid. Um, unfortunately, loans are not increasing, the, you know, the amount of loans, which is not necessarily a a bad thing other than the student loans. Uh, I would have liked over the last 17 years to see those increase a little bit to keep pace with what's going on out there with the college cost. But in addition to that, um, there's, you know, there's also the fact that a lot of colleges just lump parent plus loans in there to solve the problem. So, you know, just something to keep in mind. Um, uh, I, I, as far as scheduling a meeting with me again, love to meet with you. Just uh, go to dnb at collegeaidpro.com. It's in the chat box and you know, feel free to schedule that meeting with me. Um, it would be great to, uh, to talk to you more about the, the programming and what we can do. Uh, let's see, other questions. Does anybody else have any other questions for me? Or if not, I can kind of go on to one other thing I wanted to talk about. Um, and we may make this a short, um, session. For those of you who are big coffee drinkers, by the way, I happen to not be a big coffee drinker. I, I do occasionally do a little hot tea. Uh, my wife always gives me grief about saying that it's more cream than it is tea. But that's kind of the way I do it, kind of the English style. But today, I'm, I'm not that I'm promoting them, but I'm a, a cherry Pepsi kind of guy. And so that's my uh, caffeine of choice today. Uh, let's see. Uh, feel free to put those questions, by the way, either. Uh, I mean, it'd be great if you could put them into the um, the Q&A section. Uh, what is the level of income to qualify for a Pell Grant? Actually, this is a really good question. Um, they're bumping it up. Um, just so that you know, in the past, the total income was about $40,000. And so if you were at 40,000 or below, you would qualify for some, if not all of the Pell Grant money. They're bumping it up to $60,000. At least that's what we've been told initially which is, that's huge, folks. I mean, if you think about it, that's a, that's a big deal, which is why more families will likely qualify for, for this money. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Um, so very excited, to, you know, for that to be an option. Let me do this real quick. I'll stop sharing my screen with you. Um, 
My thoughts on including farmers and small business owners' assets in the calculation, boy, this is going to be a, a, a tough one. And the reason I say that is because we're going to have to come up with some valuation. Now, look, if a family was already applying to, and, and, and for those of you who don't know, Jim brings up a really good point here. Um, moving forward, the uh, FAVSA is going to operate just like the CSS profile, where every single business needs to put down a value. Um, now, think about that for a minute. That even means, you know, if, if I were doing this as a small business owner, and, and granted, I'm in the service industry, but if I have any you know, if I have any vehicles that were in my business or supplies that are in my business, if I sell merchandise or anything else like that, there's going to have to be an evaluation or a valuation that is done of that. And then that has to be reported. Um, we're all about, you know, uh, being truthful, but also taking against that any debts that you have or any expenses. And so think about the farmer. You know, what's the farmer going to do? Does the farmer have tractors and other equipment that they're going to have, you know, out there? I mean, it's a big, big deal, you know, or for that matter, any small business owner when it comes to what they're going to do. This is going to be a, a, a testing time for a lot of folks because um, of this change to that. There's going to be changes, of course, coming with uh, divorce. You know, it, before it was the parent with whom the student lived at least 51% of the time, but moving forward now it's the parent who provides the most financial support for the child. Well, how do you, pol how do you police that? How does the government police that? How do they police the values that are put on businesses? There's no Zillow that I know of. Well, other than maybe, I guess, a farm. There's no Zillow out there that tells you what your, your business is worth. Um, so just get ready. It's going to be something we're going to have to try to coach our families through. And we do believe that you always want to, you want to be fair with the number, but you also want to be realistic with the number, which is if I had to sell my business tomorrow, you know, could I get as much tomorrow as I would say, you know, negotiating with people over time to sell that business? So, you know, big deal. And then, of course, um, Adinke makes this comment. It's really true. The elimination of the multi-student discounts, it's gone. Um, as you guys probably know, we've got a petition that's going on. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just go out and Google um, College Aid Pro Petition. Um, it's out there. Um, it's a way for us, if we can, to try to get some momentum going. You may have seen that um, the state of Nebraska, uh, some of their legislators are, have brought up the concern about the elimination of the multi-student discount. It really is a big deal. They're trying to make it seem like it isn't a big deal, but you tell that to a family who's got twins or, or triplets or quads, or you tell that to a family who has kids that are only you know, one, two, or three, you know, three or four years apart from each other. Um, it's, it is a big deal. If your SAI, your student aid index is $30,000 per child, I mean, that's just a big, big, messy situation. So, um, yeah, and Dinky, you mentioned some other things here too, you know, a parent residing in a $5 million house, you know, um, it's, it is, it's, it's a, it's a really complicated situation, especially when you understand that um, in general, there is no, um, there is no overlooking those folks of you, or those of you that live on the East coast or the West coast, or, you know, in, in um, communities where your home equity has just, you know, skyrocketed through the years, it's really going to be a big deal, you know, to be able to coach and help our families as to how they approach it. That's why, I, I mean, I wanna make you aware of this. I hope you know this, but we have a series of webinars that CAP does through the year uh, based on the timing of things that are going on. So for example, we specifically, Peg Kehoe um, does an incredible job of walking families line by line through the uh, FAVSA and the CSS profile. Um, so you know, just know that coming up, that'll happen again here in the fall. Um, the the uh, FAVSA, unfortunately, might be delayed, again, because of what's going on with the rollout. Um, but we've got, we've got sessions on the appeal process, which we're obviously wrapping up right now. We're almost to the finish line on that. Um, in fact, I just got an email from a student who's desperately trying to get some additional money from Indiana University, or excuse me, not Indiana, Purdue University. Um, you know, but we talk about how are you going to take care of your four-year um, payment program, you know? How, how do loans play into this whole thing? Um, understanding financial aid 101. I mean, the dynamics of all those types of things. You know, how do you pick colleges and all that? So 
we're trying to help you meet your client's needs for free. I mean, those, those presentations that we do are absolutely free. And um, you may or may not know that we also do these for, for schools that partner up with us, um, that have the MyCap that's actually available to all their students. We are trying, we're on, I mean, College A Pro, which is what I love about the, the organization, is on a mission to change the way people shop for college. And you and I know that there are lots and lots and lots of families out there that are getting shell-shocked when they start to look at these price tags, not only for the first year, but for multiple years. And so um, that's why the software can be an, an incredible tool to help out with that. Um, I would encourage you to Google, if you haven't already, um, you know, the, the, the big changes that are coming to the um, FAFSA so that you don't have any surprises as well. And look, just know too that some of these things are rolling out and as they roll out, there may be changes. There's no guarantee about this whole multi-student discount. We can hope that we get enough momentum that, that the congressman up there you know, will, will actually decide to work together, okay? And, and approach this and realize that the legislation that they've passed, it was passed in December of 2020, is not reflective of where most families are, you know? Um, so that we can work through that. Um, also, um, any other questions on, I mean, we've talked about obviously those changes, but any questions on the software? Uh, for those of you that are using MyCap, have you been able to and have you liked using the uh, transfer and compare and the evaluate uh, and appeal tool that we've got in there now? I mean, that's in the software. Personally, I think it was a game changer. You know, the whole opportunity to be able to walk families through whether or not it's a, it's a good option that they've received understanding that it's driven 100% by the accuracy of the financial details that they put in at the top, you know, as to whether it makes sense to go and appeal that. But I don't know about you, but um, having that additional tool in the MyCap software is pretty incredible. Um, so not seeing anything, hearing anything, I will keep on. Um, you know, let's not forget that when it comes to college funding, that's really the next piece of the puzzle with all of our families out there. You know, as a financial planner for 25 years, um, I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly as far as the kinds of choices that families are making out there. You know, if they were lucky enough to set up 529 plans, or if there's grandparents that are going to help pay for college, or if scholarships have indeed come through for families, it can really be a, a game changer for, you know, for families that are trying to do things. But in the same time, we can run into challenges with families that are out there where they just weren't able to save enough. And then, you know, maybe you run into this. I know I do uh, because I'm, I'm known in my community as the guy to go to to talk about college funding is that I'll have those families that they're getting shell-shocked now by these financial aid offers that come in and the lack of money that these schools are getting. And they're saying, what happened? In fact, I, I literally just had this conversation with the family and, and I'll, I'll read to you what she, I'm, I'm quoting um, what her son said to her, which was, why did I work so hard to get into this particular college when I didn't get a dime? Um, in other words, this young man has done all kinds of extracurriculars and all kinds of AP uh, classes. I've had kids that have gone through, you know, IB, but he's, he's being, he's feeling spurned or, or scorned, maybe scorned is the right word to use there, scorned by the process. Um, I did not help them with picking the colleges. Like I said, they're coming to me at this late stage, trying to decide what to do. I will tell you that out of the 20 colleges that the young man applied to, he only got into five and none of the five were his top schools. Um, you know, he, he also got waitlisted at a number of schools. So they're, you know, on the fence as to what's going to happen. And I'm sure you're, you're in the same boat. Um, so many of us have had students apply to such a much larger number of schools, especially those top tiered schools where they're getting an unprecedented number of applications driven 100% by what? Test optional, you know, and, and their thought that maybe I'll get in, maybe I'll be the one. And yet, um, you know, there's just a lot of rejection that's coming out of that and a lot of wait lists and a lot of students that are never going to get off those wait lists. And also those families that think, hey, if I get off the wait list, then I'm also going to get all kinds of money. It, that may come through with those financial aid offers, but it also may be you know, a situation where they don't. And so it's just a tough, tough time for our families out there when it comes to coaching them through what to do and, and you know, how to get them across the finish line. I hope that for many of you, that your seniors have all made their final decisions 
I happen to have one outlier out of all of my seniors that's still trying to figure it out. Um, he's perplexed because he's got an incredible scholarship offer on the table, but it, it's very similar to way or the way that the um, like an ROTC or um, military academy um, opportunity um, comes, which is with a required amount of service. And that's what happens in this particular scholarship too, is that the student would have to work for, um, actually it's in Kentucky, the, the Department of Transportation for the next four years um, to fulfill the commitment that they made to help him pay for college. And so he's on the fence about that whole situation. So again, I wish you luck as, as we're going through this process, trying to figure out what um, is the best option out there. And most importantly, as you are coaching your families moving forward on the best choices, because when you're talking about schools now that are, you know, uh, 40, 50, 60, 70, $90,000 per year, it really can shock and rock some people's lives, and, you know, in their whole conversation. And also because they're, of course, you know, the students anyway are hearing it from their peer pressure, although moms and dads too about, oh, my, my son or daughter went to this school or my neighbor's kid went to that school and got all kinds of money. And yet there's no way to know what their financial circumstances look like or the student's resume of accomplishments look like or what's going on out there. So kind of a big deal. Um, all right. Well, folks, listen, seeing no other um, questions, comments, or even emotional outbursts at this point in time, I want to thank you for joining me today. It's been fun. I, I always love talking to IECs. I, I wish that we could have more interaction and the fact that I can actually see your smiley faces, uh, but I do appreciate you joining for these programs. Um, so the bottom line is let's do everything we can to help our students pick the right schools, um, you know, at the right prices out there, use the MyCap software if that's something that you feel comfortable with. And if not, you know, um, and if you're still on the fence, reach out to us. We'd be happy to walk you through and see if it's a good fit. Um, but I hope you'll keep coming back to these IEC um, sessions as we talk about updates on financial aid and other things within our practices that are going on out there, more than just about the software, because it really is more about that. Uh, but um, again, thanks for joining me. Have a great weekend. And uh, hope to see you again in two weeks. Take care, everyone.